Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the July instalment of Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. Now, I'm going to be honest, it's actually the end of June, but I've already filmed my June update, so I thought I'd film this as the start of a July one, and then I'll possibly read some more Indie in July as well. So, today I'm going to be talking about This Abstract Mental Thing by Ryan A. Loera. Ryan is Madman Reads and Rocks here on Booktube, and this is a collection of his poetry. It's actually technically three collections in one. I should read you the blurb. This abstract mental thing is actually three original poetry collections in one. Told you. The first is titled This Thing We Call Life and is a collection of 30 poems. The second is titled Mental Forms and is a collection of 40 poems. The third and final collection is titled Abstractness and is a collection of 44 poems. All poems are original creations and were created with one goal in mind, to challenge both the reader and the writer. Please pause for a few seconds, minutes after reading each poem and reflect on whatever it reminds you of or doesn't remind you of. And what's cool about this, this is like free verse poetry, which I like. It's also quite bleak, which I like. And the poems are always like this similar length as well, so they all fit on one page. What I'm going to do, because I think that's the best thing to do with poetry, is to read you some of it. So I'm going to read you like one poem from each collection. So we'll start with Tree Demons. So this is from uh, This Thing We Call Life. Evil tree demons tell her to do idiotic things such as start a pillow fight with a deranged gorilla or play hide and seek in a nuclear power plant. Boy, I tell you, those tree demons are pretty clever. They even told her to vacuum her apartment, then set it on fire. That's clever. I wish I knew a tree demon. Oh, wait, I think I do. No, I, I don't. Okay, these are from Mental Forms. We'll do Stuffed Priest. Someone killed the priest, then had him stuffed with noodles, metaphors, hatred, peas, thoughts, marbles, Christ, Buddha, Moses, pyramid schemes, cotton, hip-hop, caramel, abusive analogies, then they hung him up to dry. And then we'll do one from abstractness. We'll go with uh, patriotic. Salami distance, the yam, blame the economy, Uncle Sam cannot afford to be compassionate. Drop another fucking bomb on a hut with a family in it. That's right, we need politics as much as MTV needs another terrible reality show. Anti-patriotic? I'm quite patriotic. I've lost two friends to the wars, and I'm losing my soul in corporate America. So yeah, pretty good stuff. I think Ryan's poetry is influenced by a lot of the writers who my poetry is influenced by and who I enjoy reading, so that's interesting as well. Uh, as I said, I don't think this is going to be for everyone, but if you're into free verse, which is like my jam, then it's definitely your kind of thing. It's also, again, it's abstract and mental. It's quite experimental. So um, if you're into more sort of mainstream poetry, it's probably not going to be your thing. But yeah, I enjoyed it. I gave it a 3.75 out of 5. I also thought it was cool how... Um, you know, I watch Brian on Booktube, and so I see some of his poetry videos, and it was cool how reading it, I kind of read them in his voice as well. So yeah, that's it for now, and hopefully I'll be back for another indie book review later on in July. All right, I've read another indie book, and no surprises, it is Ollie Jacobs. This is Film It Cuts Volume 4, title pending, a short story collection. I've uh, read and reviewed some of the Film It Cuts books previously. I'm going to read you the blurb here. What scares a clown? What do you see on the circle line? And what is the process? Fresh from the mind of Ollie Jacobs comes Film It Cuts 4, title pending. Filled with 13 new tales of terror, titillation and titteration, there's a story for whatever your boat floats upon. Title pending takes you on the roller coaster that comes with these short stories and won't let you off until you're sated. The author that brought you sci-fi comedy Kirk Sandblaster and the pulp cult classic Station 17 invites you to open these pages and enter his world. One that includes Kafka-esque nightmares at an airport, chilling prisoners and insane industrialists. Take a seat, pour a drink and indulge in another film it cut. By the way, that says bought instead of brought. It should say brought. But yeah, I enjoyed the stories here really. I read uh, the film it cuts one has been so far my like by far my favorite collection of the film it cuts books but they all have something to offer obviously as with any short story there are going to be stories you're going to like stories you're not going to like so we start off here with kind of a comedic story called dear elsa it's about a man who basically went traveling and has encountered many difficulties with many legal authorities trying to get home but it's kind of a yeah it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek comedy tale you know with a lot of dr uh, dramatic irony in it and we have the ballad of bert thundercock jones which is sort of a poet a poetic humorous ballad you know uh, which is actual poetry. Eye for an Eye, uh, Meanwhile Across the Sea, which is a zombie story. And I feel with Jacobs, 
I've read quite a few of his different takes on zombieism, and they've all kind of taken it in a different direction. But every time he writes about zombies, he does it really well. So I'm hoping at some point he does a, a full novel there. Uh, we've got Circle Line, which is about the Circle Line on the London Underground and just the people you see on it and the way that people and society in general behave, really. Dinosaur, that was quite a short but sweet one. I say sweet, it, it wasn't that sweet. It was vicious about a little kid who's in, in like playing this uh, this game that has all too real consequences. Uh, well, we've got Sense, 7 and 8. That was another poetic sequence. 5% remaining about a man who's going on a date, but his phone only has 5% remaining. I thought that was cool because it, you know, it, it took a look at our society and held a mirror up to it. And uh, yeah, that was good. Bonko, which was about the clown. The clown has a fear. You'll never guess what it is. Don't Look, The Creations of Dubar, The Process, which I think was probably the best one. Almost reminded me of The Lottery by Shirley Jackson. Um, it's kind of this post-apocalyptic society uh, where... Basically, there is a process by which we deal with overpopulation. It actually was quite similar to the thinking behind Inferno by Dan Brown, which I read recently, where basically overpopulation is going to destroy the world. So what do you do about that? Well, you reduce the population, don't you? And then we have Dear Stanley, which was just a short little piece at the end, which didn't really stand out to me. But overall, I gave this like a 3.5 out of 5. It was a pretty good collection of short stories, uh, especially for an indie collection. There were the occasional errors with things like apostrophes and like it's, for example. But all in all, the stories themselves kind of made up for that. And yeah, I just thought there were a lot of cool ideas explored here. So happy days. I look forward to some more filmic cuts. And I'm going to film this now in case I don't read any more indie. So, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know what you thought of the indie books that I read in July. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.